What are some of the other things that you feel have contributed to your sort of maybe success in personal brand to deliver like wow moment? I didn't have a structure. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't have anything. I was just the front desk and valet guy who was just making people happy. I just wanted to make them happy. That's all it was. If there's a financial gain to it, that's phenomenal. When I opened the business in Las Vegas, so I had my license and then I was operating, but I didn't have any structures and fundamental foundations and didn't have any mentors. I was just happy to help people. And when I see their happiness, that was just my success. That was my payback. And people saw that and they say, wow, this guy is genuine. I'm going to tell my friend about you. I'm going to tell my family about you. Like I was saying, it was a domino effect. That's when the personal brand started. That recognition of Johnny Vegas, that's not even my name, but they created that name for me. This Mm. became a brand itself. Johnny Vegas became a brand. Welcome to the show, Johnny. It's great to have you here. Um, We've met via mutual connections, so it's great to have you here. Why don't you do a little introduction and tell everyone who you are? Absolutely. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, and uh, it's great to be here. Um, So my name is Johnny. Actually, my name is Johannes. Uh, I go by Johnny because of our by clients and friends, they ah. find it easy to call me Johnny rather than um, Johannes. That was where we had the confusion yeah. on the telephone yeah. <laughs> just beforehand because I was like, I don't have an appointment with Johannes. I'm teaching Johnny. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean there there's a big story about you know why my name Johnny. Uh, we can get into it later on. Okay, but yeah, I'm I'm the CEO of uh, KLT Holdings, and KLT Holdings is. Uh, an umbrella of multiple brands such as Cloudout, which is a lifestyle management company, mm-hmm. um, as well as Events by Cloudout. It concentrates on events, con- concerts, and uh, you know, uh, friendly uh, games and things like that. That what we do here, mm-hmm. as well as um, uh, Coop Travel is uh, is a is a, it's a brand that brings uh, you know a, a community together in a traveling business. So we, I have created these brands where we right now are doing such a good job and Dubai has really given us that boost as well to grow uh, and to the place we want to be. Love it. So yeah. there's, there's so much I want to unpack there yeah. and it's like, where do I start? So <laughs> maybe first of all, what brought you to the Middle East? And then we'll get into sort of how did we get to the, the sort of the three businesses and, and what was the starting point there? So let's start with Dubai. What brought you to the Middle East? Sure. So I'm, I'm known for, uh, actually, if you say who's Johnny Vegas, you find two Johnny Vegas. One, a comedian that's well known. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think a funny, amazing guy. And then you find me and I'm, I'm the kind of guy who tailor holidays and um, lifestyle management for high end people and high profile, uh, uh, like, you know, athletes, celebrities, and in that magnitude. So um, my origin is I was born in Ethiopia and I, I left Ethiopia when I was 10 years old to Las Vegas. So my life has been in Las Vegas all this time, which is amazing and i you know i got a degree in aviation i didn't like it so i went into the business of hospitality because vegas is all about hospitality the casinos and Absolutely. all that stuff yeah. right so and i got into it where i became a valet tenant parking cars but I'm not talking about just parking cars, though. We're parking cars of Mayweather, Michael Jordan, Leonardo DiCaprio, people like that. That's come into the Las Vegas and like, you know, that entertainment industry. Yeah. Um, and I was working in the Bellagio Hotel at that time. So through that, I got like, you know, into this hospitality business where concierge and front, uh, front services and operations and things like that. And through that, I created the business Cloud Out uh, and Cloud Out expanded from uh, Las Vegas and then to LA and then I took it to Miami. So slowly it just blossomed where I took it to Spain and Greece. And then in 2017, I brought it to here in Dubai. Um, But I came to Dubai with curiosity. I was Mm -hmm. invited, I came for three days just to see it. And I ended up staying for two months. <laughs> I think it's, it's often yeah, the case. People yeah. go, I'm just coming for a week's holiday or I'm just coming for a year yeah. and like me, 20 years, yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what makes Dubai so fascinating is yeah. that like, you know, 
my story can be related to many people that are here today yeah. as we just came in to just look at it, see what it is. Uh, because what I come from in Las Vegas in the US, like uh, the perception of the Middle East or Dubai itself, you know, at that time, it wasn't really as it is today. Yeah. So when you come here, you come here with a question mark in your head. But when you actually hear and experience it yourself, is something else. Mm. And so while I, well, you know, when I came here, I was nervous because it's just an unknown environment for me. So, but meeting the people, understanding the culture, it was really, really, really amazing. And then all of a sudden I said, man, there's something here that is relate, that can relate to the, you know, the business that I have. So I went back home, uh, you know, I did more market research and then all of a sudden, here we are in Dubai for what, four or five years yeah. now. So it's quite an amazing journey that uh, it took place for me, yes. I love that. Can we just even take a few more steps back? So yeah. what was it like going from Ethiopia to Vegas? And how come Vegas out of all the places in the world? Like, how did that happen? Did mom and dad just go, this is, this looks great? Or was there <laughs> opportunities? Like, it, it's, it's such a difference. Yeah, no, I, honestly, uh, I wish it was, I wish it was uh, a choice thing. It wasn't a choice. Um, so, you know, I come like, I come from a poor background as some people are today who, um, uh, who are in, you know, in the position that I'm in today. And we, I, like, I haven't seen my dad for many years. Mm. So the first time I saw my dad was when I was about nine years old. So my dad, was living in uh, in Europe where he was studying um, chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. So, and he came back home and all of a sudden, uh, America has this thing called DV, like Diaz and David, Diaz and Victor, DV. And it's a lottery. It's a lottery <sighs> that is given to uh, the country yeah. where you can fill out. And if you win, you can go to America. Yeah. And so fortunately, my dad did it. So I, we had the, I didn't, at the time I didn't understand it. I was, yeah. a, I was a child. So he won, we went, but in order to go there, you have to have a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And our sponsor is my mom's sister who resides in Las Vegas. There's the connection. Yeah. So, and so we went to Las Vegas and we called home our new home, Las Vegas. And it was a struggling situation for me because I didn't speak English at the time. And I didn't understand the culture very well. So, you know, it, it was tough, but I got through it. Yeah. And uh, here I am today. Las Vegas made me who I am and Dubai created an opportunity for me. And that journey from dropping out of aviation, which I imagine, did that go down particularly well with the family? Or Yeah, because, you know, what happened is that, so I went to a college in Las Vegas um, well, initially, because I was playing sport, I was playing football, mm -hmm. and I I couldn't play anymore because of surgeries and injuries and things like that. I couldn't continue. So uh, I was very lost. So I didn't know exactly what I want to study. So I remember my mom told me, oh, why don't you just be a pilot? It's great. I was Perfect. like, yeah. Just be a pilot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was like, why not? Yes, you're right. Why not? So I, you know, admitted to um, a community college they teach aviation mm -hmm. technology and got it finished it there and I was flying like you know Piper and Cessnas and things like that and uh, the next stage is to become an actual pilot flying Boeings and things like that Commercial. and yeah so and the school is Ambry Riddle which is in Florida and you have to pay a hefty amount mm. in order to attend there and my mom say we can't go that far because we don't have the financial um, uh, backup. Backing, yeah. yeah it's, so, and and it was very depressing for me because, okay, I'm lost here. So I was able to achieve this, but then I'm not able to finish it exactly the way I want to. It's so I got the degree for it, but I didn't get to the point that where I really want to go. Mm -hmm. So I kind of fell, like you know, fall off. That, that, that love I had for the aviation. So I got into the hospitality business. Yeah. But I believe in something and that is things happen for a reason. If it wasn't for that, I won't be here today. Mm -hmm. And 
I fall in love with a new thing that is the hospitality industry, yeah. which gave me the opportunity to communicate and to connect, to network with people that are so amazing. You know, it's not only high end, but normal people that's coming to hear their stories and to understand who they are and what their background is. It just, it, I found myself within that. I love that. Yeah. And the inspiring piece is you yeah. then went to start, you know, you took a job and you, so you started as valet and parking, yeah. you know, fabulous cars and making connections there. Yeah. So let's touch a little bit on that. Did you end up like, did you just meet the same people? Like, would you get the regulars that come in and you yeah, start developing so, the relationships? Yeah, with them? yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you're, you're at the, the gate, let's say, yeah? yeah, you're at the door of the hotel where people just in and out, in and out, in and out. So you see, like, the first thing they see uh, when they come to the hotel is you. And the last thing they see when they leave the hotel is you. That's so, so true. So, I've never thought yeah. about that. It's the so, last, first yeah. and last impression is, yeah, is exactly. valid. It's important, right? Yeah. So, so, and I'm there, like, you know, I'm there doing the tickets. So meaning that I, I, I stand there and I just see these people mm. in and out. So they get, you know, they get familiar with you. They get closer to you. They tell you their stories. They tell you, you know, their frustrations or their happiness or their, you know, the full emotion. You get it. You, you're, you're the Dr. Phil of, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, that area. So, and you love it because you, you tend to learn from it. You know, you're like, wow, I love this. I love when people are engaging with me. So I apply that to the brand that I have today yeah. and the way I live in my lifestyle. Yeah. So let's talk about that brand yeah. today. So you've got a number of different businesses. Yeah. What was the first business? What was the little seed of an idea? And yeah. then like, how, you know, how did you, what were the steps that you took? Because I think yeah. when I work with so many entrepreneurs, they don't know the steps and often they're different for everyone, but there's something in what you're going to tell us. I'm very sure that's <laughs> going to inspire someone who's yeah. listening today. No, it is like, you know, the journey is that I, I really like, I was a lost soul who found himself through like communicating with people. And I will never tell myself that the work that I did is not a good work or is not enough to impress people. No, but that's my journey, that's my life. And that's mm -hmm. because of that, it got me here. Mm -hmm. So Cloud Out, which is a brand, yeah. came to be because of that journey. And the journey is I was working at, you know, these front desks and valet and concierge. And I see people every day for eight hours i see different type of characters with different type of emotions and i always ask myself how can i be able to handle this person how can i be able to tailor my emotions with these type of like different characters that i see who is lining up to check into their rooms lining up to park their cars you know mm -hmm. so i i found myself into a situation and uh where I say, hey, I know how to do this thing. This is amazing. So why don't I create a brand, you know, and be able to engage with them with based on what I have learned, how to be able to control the emotions, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I created it as a room, like, you know, booking platform, okay. cloud out, just yeah. to book rooms. So I, uh, you know, I got into the industry of, travel industry you mm -hmm. know and uh, i found out like how you do it uh, just getting the suppliers and understanding the, the 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 community and then be able to have a discount you know i want to be i wanted to create a, a brand where you win i win everybody wins so it's it's, it's kind of weird but it works so you know you get these rates and you be able to mark up a certain type of rate mm -hmm. where you get it less than what you see online. Perfect. Yeah. So you save money. Yeah. And then I'm be able, like the company be able to make, you know, a certain amount yeah. and you save a certain amount. So you are happy. Yeah. We are happy and everybody's happy. So I created something like that. Yeah. And it worked. And then what happened was um, one time I met a guy when I was parking a car. It was a French guy who's a movie star now who lives in Dubai, by the way. No way. Are you so, are you friends? Yes, we're still friends. Oh, I yes. love it. Yeah, From so, that and to that journey. That's, imagine that's that. Amazing, that's, yeah? Yeah, you never so, know who you're going to meet yeah. and what part of the story they're going yeah, to play. Exactly. So, and 
I met him and, you know, uh, we talked in a, like, you know, a certain way. And then um, all of a sudden he said, I'm going to, I'm going to send you somebody because he liked the way I was looking after him. And he said to me, you know what? Hey, uh, I told him who my favorite uh, football player is. And he said, that's my, that's my friend. That's my brother. Next time I come to Las Vegas, I'll bring you a signed shirt and, a, you know, shorts. Yeah. I said, okay, okay. And, but he did. One year later, he came back to Las Vegas with a little, um, a little bag of signed shirt and short and looking for me in Las Vegas. Where is this guy? And no way. 100% and found me. And that also shaped my character, you know, show me like keeping your words means a lot for people. Mm-hmm. And it meant a lot to me for the fact that this guy kept his word and did what he did. And so he sent me a friend of his, uh, he said, can you take care of him and his wife? I did. I paid for their hotel room for like two nights or whatever it was. And they were shocked. They're like, no, you don't need to do this. I'm like, don't worry. It's okay. Because the way I looked at it, it was more like a gratitude, you know, thank you so much for doing what you did. You know, let me give you back. But the way they took it was something beyond. They're like, whoa, you do this for us. This is unbelievable. So the next person that he sent me was a famous footballer from, he was playing Arsenal at the time. And he came to Las Vegas. I looked after him and then it became a domino effect. So he told another player, that player told another player. So it just went in. It was word of the word of mouth, yeah. you know, one of the biggest marketing, right? So, and cloud, out was just bloomed then. It just became something big where it moved to uh, LA. It was looking after for them. And then from LA to Miami, Miami to Ibiza, Marbella, Mykonos, you know, it went on and on. And then here, here we are today in Dubai. I love that. And I yeah. think a huge key piece of <laughs> yeah. that, that I take away is your personal brand. Yeah. It, it is, I mean, a lot of people think personal brand, social media, like we'll get to that in a minute, but what you're talking about is, is what I describe personal branding is, mm. is how do you make someone feel when they come into contact with you? Yeah. That to me is representation of your personal brand. And that is exactly what you did mm. to the first person that you met that then ended up being a snowball effect in your business. Yes. What are some of the other things that you feel have contributed to your sort of maybe success in personal brand to deliver like wow moments yeah. or those kind of things? See, when I start dealing with um, uh, people like this and industry like that, mm. I didn't look at it as a business. I didn't have a structure. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't have anything. I was just the front desk and valet guy who was just making people happy. I just wanted to make them happy. That's all it was. And if, if, if there's a financial gain to it, that's phenomenal. And so cloud out, like when I opened the business, by the way, in, 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 in Las Vegas, to open a business, it takes you two minutes. It's simple. You just click, click. And you pay and I said, it's done. Oh, I need some lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can give him a lesson, no problem. <laughs> so, uh, but it's just that, that's how it was. So I had my license and then I was operating, but I didn't have any structures and mm. fundamental foundations. And I, I didn't have any mentors. I didn't have anything like that. I was just happy to help people. And when I see their happiness, I, that was just my success. That was my payback. You know, mm. and people saw that and they say, wow, this guy is genuine. So I'm going to tell my friend about you. I'm going to tell my family about you, you know, and it just became like I was saying, it was a domino effect. Right, yeah. And so that's when the personal brand started, you know, mm-hmm. that's when that recognition of Johnny Vegas started. That's not even my name, you know, but they created that name for me. Ah. It just became a brand itself. Johnny yes. Vegas became a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Johnny Vegas, well known in UK, Johnny Vegas, well known in Greece and Marbella today in Dubai. Mm. And, and it's because of that. And that gave me a lesson uh, to, to, to how, you know, uh, uh, if I go back and look at it, that's self branding and, 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 and a massive way. Mm. Uh, but it was, it was not done with a strategy. It, it wasn't was necessarily just, done intentionally. It, it was, was intention, what you yeah. were doing and how, how you were as a person. And then yeah. people have seen that from that. Yeah. Um, there's got to have been some challenges along the way. 
because yeah. <laughs> um, you know everyone loves the high and I love your story it's so inspiring but I think with that there's always things that happen that people are like right that was a really bad day and I would really wish that I could have no. changed it what have been some of the things for you that have been a big learning lesson because nothing's ever bad in the way that it's a, a failure as such what do we learn from it so what have been some of those things for you you know what like that's a great question and this is why I, I, I use one word to express this, and that's perception, mm, you know? Mm-hmm. It's all about perception. Because what you see on the social media, what I do, mm-hmm. and what really happens beyond the scene are totally night and day. Two different things. Mm-hmm. When you are looking after for such individuals, mm-hmm. when you are traveling, when you are making things happen, there are so many obstacles. Well, moving parts, I guess. Yeah. So things that can happen yeah. that are out with your control, I yeah, suppose, yeah. as well. There, there's so many obstacles, mm. you know? And because you're not, only, uh, you're not only challenged by yourself, but you're challenged by others around those people as well, you know? So the perception is, whoa, look what this guy does. It's amazing. Like, look what he's putting together. Yes, it is true. It's amazing. And what we put together is phenomenal. But if you really put a microscope on how we do it, it's something else. Because, see, everything detail has to be perfect, Mm -hmm. you know. And in order to do that, you're dealing with suppliers. You're dealing with the, 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 the individuals, friends and families, you're dealing with different characters that you need to uh, impress. You have to be able to understand where and how to uh, reply to the people mm-hmm. and how to be able to cater to them because not everybody is the same. I'll give you an example. If I'm an athlete or if I'm an individual, I don't travel by myself. I travel with a pack, you know, whether I have my two friends or my 10 friends. And all those people have different, you know, needs and different likes and different way of expressing themselves. Your focus cannot be only one person. Your focus has to be in the accumulator of all those people. Mm -hmm. So how are you be able to cater all of them and make all of them feel satisfied, you know? And how are you going to take the criticism because someone is going to feel some type of way and that might hurt your feelings Mm -hmm. and your emotion. So this is where you leave your emotions aside. And this is where you put everything aside and pay attention to what the job is and able to take criticism, able to have that thick skin and be able to come back and make that person satisfied rather than engaging with them in a different way. So, Yes, it's 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 quite uh, the you know uh, the journey when you go into this type of business, and it's all about the perception. You yeah. know what you see and what happens and how it's done is two different things. Yeah, social yeah. media yeah. is great for some things, yeah. but it can also throw in a few challenges. Yeah. Yes. How do you, you know, when you talk about that, you are just you, yeah. and you have a team that is working behind the scenes making sure that everything everything comes together but how do you how do you translate that because i think that's a lot of thing that a lot of challenges that you know companies or entrepreneurs that are growing a business have that people buy into them which mm-hmm. is great then they scale the business yeah. so you've got the relationships you're growing the team how do you um translate what's so special and unique about what you do with your team? Like, yeah. Do you do trainings with them or how, like, how, how would you do that? So when I started, I didn't have a team. Yeah. I'd done everything by myself and, and it was the most difficult thing, but it was the most important thing mm. because it was preparing me for what I am today. And when you work in, in the industry that I'm in, and the industry that I am going in right now is it's difficult because you're 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 dealing with different type of people, different type of products, different type of you know any type of needs that's there. You're dealing with it because you're the fir- the person that's responsible, and anything happens, you take accountability for it. 
and you have to. So that journey of those experiences that I've been through mm -hmm. taught me how to be able to engage with people. So the, the team that I have today is, is taught by the lesson that I have been, you know, I've been going through and I'm able to give them that lesson, say, okay, I want them to focus on not how much you make, you know, because financially everything is there, mm -hmm. you know, it's always there, but you have to know how to shape your character in order to grab that. So when you go into the industry that I'm in or work for me, I make sure that they focused on what they're there for. Okay. You know, let me, exp let me explain it just a little bit clear. Yeah, yeah. So if you come and working for me, people say, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money because I'm going to work with oh such a high profile people. I'm yeah, going to okay. be doing this. And so they have that perception, right? That's a perception. Yeah. And so, but in reality, I have to wake you up a little bit. Mm. Yes, what you think is there, but I'm not going to give it to you because I want you to value what you're getting, mm -hmm. you know, because then you will care about it. So I will teach you and I will give you the tools, but it will, it will take time, but guarantee you, you will be better than me. Mm -hmm. by the time we finish so that's how i keep my team and loyalty comes through that yeah. because after you after you work hard and you build something there's no way you want to let it go because you really want to see it even blossom even more and they feel then part of the, yeah. the team and yes. the journey that's exactly and they feel like they belong yeah and which they do yeah. because they create it i just give them the tools and the experience that i had but i want to make sure they feel the, the everything they do has a value, not just someone throws money at you and then you're like, ah, okay. And then you don't care about it. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting concept, but it works. So how do you reward your, your team members? Do you kind of, you know, financial peace, yeah, it's there, but is there other things that you do to reward your, your team or to incentivize them? Yes, there is, there is, uh, there is incentives of what, what we do is, what I do is that I give you four options, you know, actually, you know, my assistant is here, so I don't want her to hear this, but, <laughs> <Still coming out laughs> uh, yeah. <now>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we give you four options, mm -hmm. you know, there's a financial options, there is perks, yeah. you know, um, there is lessons, uh, which is like educational lessons okay. that you can put and there is um a mental wellness situation nice so i put these packages for together for them in an envelope and then i say choose one you know some choose most choose the financial side of it you know some choose certain things so but i tell them before you choose don't choose what is relevant to you now choose what will be relevant to you later and what will benefit you and what will help you to grow, right? So why I'm saying that to them is because 80% of them will choose the money, which will make them happy for that moment, yeah. which will make them feel good, but then that's done, yeah, yeah. it's finished. So some of them will choose the health side, yeah. which is the mental side, which helps them in longer run. Because they will understand the psychology side of it. They feel good that like, you know, when you feel good, you do good, you know, and there's the perk side where they can have a staycation in a hotel, which is taken care of by us, or they can go on a journey to a vacation somewhere else, yeah. you know, paid for, which gives them also, which I think is good because then it gives you to collect yourself, you know, to, uh, to appreciate you know, what you do and how you got that. And so having these helps the, not only the brand, but the, you know, the team to grow, the team to come back, the mm -hmm. team to stay. So, and it's important. I, I, I recommend it for other brands to do the same thing. What envelope would Johnny uh, pick? Me? Yeah, what would you I, pick? 
That's a good question. Um, the money. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> After you just shared all that. <laughs> no. Um, me personally, uh, it, it, uh, you know, mental health is one of the biggest thing mm-hmm. because, I, like, I went through a struggle in Dubai um, when I came here because not knowing the culture, not knowing the country, um, uh, industry, the people in the same industry that I'm in don't want to see you succeed. So they, 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 they you know, they talk behind your back and mm-hmm. trying to, you know, there's so much negativity around it. And y- you come into this industry trying to understand it, it, it take a toll on your mental health, mm-hmm. you know, and among other different things in life, it, it pushes you. If you're not mentally stable, you're not able to do things that you really want to achieve. So, you know, if I had to take the envelope for me, it would be that, you know, that mental health side of it because I want to be able to understand I'm okay in order to uh, function in yeah. life, you know? So, and, you know, you, you have to exercise, right? You have to eat well. Uh, you have to, you know, do this yoga. You have to do all these things to calm yourself because mm-hmm. every day we stress. Even if we don't want to stress, we stress. And that's part of life and there's nothing you can do about it yeah. but you can combat it you can you can you know stay with it and by that is by doing these type of things and it's key if you work in a company if you work in an industry like ours yeah. because you it's a guarantee that you will stress yeah, <laughs> because <so true. laughs> because if you're not able to put uh you know a client an apm and uh, and zuma you know you stress it so mm-hmm. how you be able to <laughs> calm yourself so it's important to, uh, to have that yeah. i think i'd maybe pick the education one yeah um because i think in terms of here's your finance right now but if i yeah. educated myself and learned other things then that would potentially have a a better long-term investment shall yeah. we say no i agree yeah but i love the envelope thing yeah. i remember years yeah. and years and years ago i went on a date and um when i met they he picked me up and he gave me three envelopes <laughs> and there was three different restaurants <laughs> okay in it, yeah. which i kind of thought was yeah. a nice thing to do and yeah. it was like pick your restaurant so we picked one yeah and then after we'd had dinner it was like can I look at the other ones yeah. as well? And I just thought, I love the envelope thing as a... As no, a, I mean, it's, 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 it's uh, like, I don't want people to come and work for me and say, okay, I want to go have fun. You know, I want to go to the nightlife. I want to go to the beach. I want to go to the yacht. I want to do this. I want to do that, like that. Instagram. The perception the, yeah. is they think that that's yeah, what that's, working in yeah. the team is part of. Exactly. Yeah. Many people, like, for example, I have... Um, pro athletes Mm -hmm. and their friends you know i organize stuff for them and um and then their friends will see because they've never seen it such a thing you know because the pro athletes say okay you know what i'm gonna bring my friends on holiday they deserve it because they never seen things like this so humbleness you know brings them together Mm -hmm. and then and then these guys never been you know exposed in this environment so they see it they see the happiness and they see all that Mm -hmm. and they they have that, you know, that image of, oh man, it's like this always, I can do this. And they say, can, I, can we work with you? And that's uh, the first question they ask, can uh, we work with you? Okay. You know, and, and my question is sure. I'll never say no to anyone, yeah. you know, I say sure. And then you tell them, so, okay, you want to work, this is what's going to happen. I want you to do this task. I want you to do this, 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 this. Really? They're like, wait, what? <laughs> like what am i supposed to go and then to they yeah fall through the cracks yeah and then and then they they understand that like what they see is not what it really seems like you know mm. to, it is in a sense but then it's like it, you have to build it mm. you know you have to put it together in order to 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 bring it to that level yeah so but some people are not capable of to do that why because that's not their passion yeah. that's not their you know that's not the way they are they're different yeah. so but they love the fun part who doesn't like the fun part you know so um when it comes to the job side of it you know it we fall a different direction because you know what we do and what you see are not the same so without naming names um tell me one of the most fabulous trips that you've ever organized for 
for for anyone is i mean i'm sure there's been a few yeah um any that you can share that been like wow that was pretty cool or we did this and it was so different because they yeah. requested this yeah um in ibiza mm-hmm. um this is my first time uh, i went there um it was my first time on a yacht like it, i was like wow this place is amazing you know different environment different type of people different type of scene yeah. so i was really really like loved it and actually i'll tell you name you know is one of the moroccan uh football player mm-hmm. his name is ashraf lazar um amazing guy big heart you know um we organized for him to um engaged engagement mm. you know and um it, what we did it was not in ibiza it was in uh, uh porto cervo in italy yeah it's a small area it's, it's a phenomenal place um it's just like the the italian culture like it's just so amazing you know and when we were organizing that for him it was in like you know this cliff of you know ocean area and the hotel the 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 brand the staff the the people that are there around there it's just such a small community but it just it feels like wow i just want to i just want to stay here you know and creating that like you know we created an environment for him you know where he was able to um uh, propose uh, you know uh, uh, to the fiance and it was really amazing and it's an experience that i never never had and never felt but it was an experience that that always i remember it because mm-hmm. it was an emotional attachment for me because he w- he is my friend and to bring that together for him and his friends and family and uh, it, it was it was quite an experience but that just goes to show that you know out of all the things you do you never know potentially what you might be asked to yeah you um, don't help support in a travel yeah. experience or to go it's spontaneous yeah yes yeah 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 yes. so what's one of the biggest myths in your industry that you would kind of like to debunk i mean we talked a little bit about the perception that people think it's all this and it's not um is there any other sort of myths that you're like right, i just need to clear the table this is not how it happens yeah no i mean i think i said it um <laughs> is, is is what you see on the instagram the happiness of all that is, yeah. is, is, is true, but that's not how it's done. It's not always like that. Mm. When you go behind the scene is where the reality is, is putting those, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, organizing uh, those events together, mm-hmm. making sure that last second request is happening, mm-hmm. you know, and making sure that the, the restaurant is full but they create extra chair for your clients and, you know, making sure, you know, the, 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 the club, um, is able to introduce your client with the, uh, the, the artists, uh, yeah. uh, there's so much in it and, but you're not enjoying it. You're there to make it happen. Yeah. So the, uh, that perception, I'll go back to perception again, yeah. that perception of you think you are, uh, having fun as in like you're the one who's drinking and having a good time and, and doing all this stuff. No, it's not. You actually the person who's in the background making sure those stuff is happening for the clients that is requesting those needs. Do you ever say no, it's not possible? Or is that sort of something in your vocabulary in the business that you say no is never an option? We'll uh, always find a way. Uh, no chance. I, I will never say no because it, no for me is a negative. Mm. So I'm a positive person and I create a positive environment around me. So if I'm not able to do it, I'll find out a way to do it. Because being in the business for 16 years in this industry and in this environment, you have, you created a network of opportunities. So the, uh, the, the request they have somewhere, some, some place is able to do it for you, you know? So as long as they told me, 
kill someone then that's a no that's it that's that's a hard no you know yeah 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 that has a hard pass yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah. i would never do this yeah (laughs) yeah but but anything else like you know we're able to make it happen for you and and if i personally i'm not able or capable of doing it and i'm sure i know someone that can help me make it happen and that's that's what this industry is about is the network and the communication and the and the you know it, it belonging into some area and making things happen for the people who need it and that's actually the most important thing people come back to you when you make the impossible possible mm. and those are the key things mm. yes. we talk i talk about that um there's a phrase that i've had from my granny and it's called deseeding the lemon okay so it's come from the perspective i've said this a couple of times on the podcast before where it's a metaphor that my granny used to have hot water with lemon okay. and she would used to deseed the yeah. lemon because she'd be like there's nothing worse than having you know really simple drink but yeah. having like a bit floating around and yeah. that has always stayed with me because I yeah. drink hot water with lemon yeah. but I took that as I got older is the tiny little things make the biggest difference oh. so when I worked for 15 years in yeah. celebrity stylist it was the tiny little things in an outfit that yeah. would make the difference the mm-hmm. tiny little things in customer service mm. that make the difference yeah so very much about what you're talking is that yeah. on a daily basis a daily basis, you de-seed the lemon yeah. with your clients so that they come back to you time and time again. Yes, true. De-seeding the true. lemon. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trademarked gonna, it. I'm going to use that one. Yeah, I do. And I want this. I, oh, genuinely, there's going to be the name of my book that's yeah. coming out. Oh, amazing. Yeah, but okay. it's um, de-seed the lemon. I want it to be a moment that people are thinking about that all the time. Because yeah. you're clearly nailing that in business and with the people yeah. that you're working with. But not everyone does, and it doesn't come naturally mm. to, to everyone either. But if you can start to think, well, what are the little things, the tiny little things that make the difference? Then mm-hmm. I true. think that's crucial. Okay, we've got one random question. Yes. The most strangest thing anyone's asked you to, to do. I don't know if you can say it, or if there's some like just uh, weird request. Like, has there been one? You know what? There is a one request. Uh, it, it was asked for me to do was... Um, uh, bring in um, a baby cup tiger into Las Vegas. Okay. Um, which we made it happen, which is phenomenal. You made it happen. It was great, yeah. Oh my um, and it was good. It was it was during summertime, and uh, they they wanted to come, but they don't want to leave, you know, their little baby uh, somewhere else. So they want to bring them along with them, and they did. And um, making that happen, that's the, that, for me. That was the strangest thing yeah. that that you know that someone can request because of you know you have to go through so many things with the animal you know well, it's, uh, it's, it's, not uh, easy. It's, it's not easy you know so f- uh, getting the proper paperwork and doing all this stuff and ma- in a short time and making it happen like you know it, it, it's 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 a it's a battle but yeah. like i was saying knowing the right people, people. and then knowing the right network helps you to uh, make things easy for you and that's the key people who like you know listening and who want to understand how business and in this industry works is it's all about network mm-hmm. you know your network is your wealth and and that's key because if you if, if i know this manager at this restaurant and if i know the ceo in this company if i say to this uh, manager in the restaurant when they are fully booked and there is nothing available, but he knows who you are. He knows your credibility. Mm-hmm. He can make anything happen because anything is possible. If this CEO has an opening in, uh, in his company, he's going to definitely take you because he knows you yeah. rather than the random person that's coming through the door. So knowing your network, knowing, creating your network and knowing your community is very, very important. What would be your number one tip then? If someone's listening and they're like, right, okay, your network is your net worth. Okay. What would be something that, how, what would be your biggest tip on someone going, but how can I develop that? You know, how can I grow my, how can I grow my network? Yeah. Like it's credibility is everything, Mm. you know, it's about, it's about what you give out there. Is what, what what what's your focus like? Because in Dubai, like I face this daily. You know, people come here for a short term, two weeks, three weeks, want to make quick money and want to disappear. You know, and so everybody has different type of 
uh, strategy yeah. and different type of perspective of w- w- what they want to do. If you want to be able to go long term, mm-hmm. you want to build a relationship. Mm-hmm. A relationship is key and it takes time and it's not something happen overnight because a relationship is built with trust. So if there is no trust, there's no relationship. So in order to build a relationship, it takes time. So you have to be able to show that person, that individual, whatever you do, that you are able to do something. Don't focus on money. Money is a tool. It's not something that's significant mm. because money is everywhere. You know, it depends on the, it, I can speak from, you know, our term. It depends on the service that you give. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm able to give someone a service, I'll pay it if I have to. But I want to make sure they know that I'm genuinely there to help them and to make to make things happen for them. Mm. Because one individual, I always see, I always tell my team this. One client is not one client. One client is a hundred client. And here's here's how a tree has a root. Yeah. But it also has branches. It has a leaf, you know. Mm -hmm. So one client is like that. Is the, is, the, is the root, but then he brings other people around him or her. So you have to make sure that you take care of the people that's coming to you, build that relationship with them, no matter how. Mm-hmm. Because if I focus on the financial side of it with that person, yes, it will, it will work for that time. But next time they're gonna go somewhere else, also try. You don't want that. You want them to come back to you, give them that, you know, uh, that emotion of uh, returning, you know, that feeling of returning back to you. And that's what cloud art is all about, is we focus on the, the, the service that we give to every individual. But we know that if we do our job right, these individuals will pay. These individuals will do whatever it takes because we put them first. We put their, uh, you know, their needs and we care so and we show that and that's what that's how you know that's how that's how the, that's how it works it's a beautiful visual analogy that people can think about yeah. when they're um in talks with someone or building a relationship that one person is not just one person it's the tree and yeah. all the leaves it's, it's, the it's important yeah i love it yeah. <laughs> um What's next? We'll wrap up. What's next for what you're doing? Is there a part of the world that you haven't set up in and developed no. next? Yeah, or what I mean, are you thinking? Listen, I, I've been in this industry of uh, lifestyle management, hospitality for 16 years. Mm. Coming to Dubai gave me the opportunity to um, venture in different type of avenues. And where now today, you know, I'm involved in many different projects that mm. outside of um, uh, what, what I usually do and, you know, helping people to grow, helping people to, uh, establish a foundation, uh, for their future. Um, and that's something that we are working on right now is helping like, you know, individuals to grow, to grow assets, to grow, um, like mentally to grow as a person mm-hmm. and we're there to help. And so I, I've been, I have like, it's the greatest thing. I have many mentors now and help me to get to that level where now I'm helping others as well. Mm-hmm. And Dubai today, you know, and I know is like California in the 1800s. It's like a gold rush, you know? And this is where everything is, where you want to challenge yourself. And when you do work hard, definitely there is a reward for it because uh, the opportunities are here are endless, you know? And we see it next door in Saudi that's happening right now as well. Yeah. So if you're an entrepreneur, you know, I say steer, steer your wheel toward this direction because things are happening here where it helps you. You know, I see many entrepreneurs uh, creating a small brand, you know, startups and making heavy amount of financial, which because the opportunity, the road, the map is here in this area. So um, I'm grateful for to be here and uh, the opportunity that I get. Yeah. It's yeah. an exciting place to live. 
Yes, it's an interesting. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Exciting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. how can people connect with you? You know, you're quite active, I think, on social media. Yeah. Um, what's your handle? Are you? I'm, I'm an Instagram guy. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm on Instagram at Johnny One Vegas, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, you can find me there. And you know, I I I work. I have a project coming in Africa where we are able to help the kids connect with you know, the kids out there. So where many brands are going there right now to um, invest and we'd be able to to, to, to help in, in, in many directions. So um, you, you will see that on that Instagram and you will see my journey there as well, my story. Oh, I yeah. was there in Malawi at the end of last year. Malawi, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, we're in Ethiopia. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and we want to be able, because at the moment, Africa, like, I can speak from the Ethiopian part of it. There's so many young people, like, you know, 60% are young adults where are not blessed enough the way I was to get the opportunity Mm. that I'm getting today. But I feel as if you give them that opportunity, what you get out of it is massive, you know? And in the sport term, you know, you have your Mbappes and Lionel Messi and Ronaldo, in Africa as well, but you're not able to see them yeah. because you, they're not getting that opportunity. So we trying to give them that opportunity to, to you know, to become uh, whatever aspiration, you know, they have, doctor, engineer, athletes, whatever it is. So that's the journey and we'll see what happens. Amazing. Stay tuned. I love it. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. It's been a pleasure yeah. to speak to you today. Thank you, really Thank you for having me. Incredibly inspiring. Thank you for having me.